algebraic properties and proofs. So you've solved for algebraic equations for years, but now it's time to justify steps using the names of mathematical reasons or properties. So the math part is not difficult today. It's getting all the vocabulary, all that terminology that goes with the math you already have in your head. So today you're going to want to have um, a method of writing these down, method of memorizing them. It's note cards or writing in a journal. But you're going to want to write down each of these so that you can process the name with the math part that you probably already know. So we're going to start with the commutative properties. And commutative properties have to do with changing the order of numbers when we either add or multiply, and we get the same result. So for example, the commutative property of addition would say 2 plus 3 is the same answer as 3 plus 2, or a plus b, same result as b plus a. So just changing the order is a quick, easy way to spot that you have the commutative property. And commutative property of addition has addition, and commutative property of multiplication um, has multiplication. So 4 times 5 gives the same answer as 5 times 4, or AB would equal BA. So commutative properties either have to do with changing the order when you add or changing the order when you multiply, giving you the same result. Now, the associative property has to do with changing how things are grouped together, either with addition or with multiplication. So the associative property of addition, if we have 3 plus and then in parentheses 4 plus 5, and then on the other side of the equal sign, we have 3 plus 4 in parentheses equals 5. We would get the same result. So these are easy to spot because you'll have different numbers inside the grouping symbols on one side of the equation than you will on the other, either with addition being the associated property of addition or the associated property of multiplication, 2 times 3 times 4, with the 2 and 3 grouped together would give us the same answer as 2 times 3 times 4 with the 3 and 4 grouped together. So you'll see different numbers grouped. Remember, we associate in groups. Associative has to do with your groups, your people, your associatives. Um, grouping things together help relate that to the word associative. Now, distributive property has to do with multiplication distributing over addition. That's where we have a number on the outside of the parenthesis, and we multiply that to each number on the inside of the parenthesis. Number on the outside, we multiply to each number on the inside of the parenthesis. And they're easy to spot because on one side you have uh, parentheses, and then after you've used the distributive property on the other side of the equation, the parentheses are gone. Transitive property is like, like a chain of thoughts. So we have if A equals B and B equals C, then A must equal C. So it's like, it's like a chain of events that triggers. So if A equals B, B equals C, then A has to equal C. Or we could have y plus 4 equals 9, and then 9 equals 5 plus 4. Well, then from the transitive property, y plus 4 has to equal 5 plus 4. Additive inverse property. And the additive inverse property has to do with adding 0. Whenever we add 0, we get back the same number we started with. That's not, we've known that forever, but we didn't know it had a special name like that. The additive identity property, so a plus 0 equals a or 5 plus 0 equals 5, any number plus 0 equals itself is the additive identity property. Adding 0, same identical number you started with. Multiplicative identity, multiplying and getting back the same number you started with, has to do with multiplying by 1. The product of any number 1 is the original number. So a times 1 is a, 5 times 1 is 5, a um, very long name for multiplicative identity property, but very simple and easy to spot. Next, we have the additive inverse. For every number out there, there is an opposite. And when I add the opposite and the original number, I get 0. So 2, the opposite of 2 is negative 2. If I add 2 and it's opposite, I get 0. A has an opposite of negative A. If I add A and negative A together, I get 0. Every number has its opposite, and they add up to zero is the additive inverse property. Next, we have the multiplicative inverse, and that says that every number has a reciprocal, or an inverse, and if I multiply a number and it's inverse, I get one. So like five has an inverse of one-fifth, every time I multiply five and one-fifth, I get one. Or two has an inverse of a half, two times one-half is one. 
every number has an inverse. When we multiply them together, their product is one. Symmetric property, oh, this is so, this one's so tough. If A equals B, then get this, B equals A. Yes, if A equals B, then B equals A. So three plus five equals eight, then eight must equal three plus five. Not to be confused with the reflexive property that's even more challenging. If A equals A, if A equals A, A equals A. X plus Y equals X plus Y. So that seems very um, obvious, but in math, if we don't clearly make a statement of something in mathematics, how do we know that we all agree that it's true? So it's so obvious, but still needs to be stated if A equals A. Now, substitution property. That's where if we have a value given, the substitution property states that for all numbers A and B, if A equals B, then A may be replaced with B. Or if we use a number example like A is 2, B is 3, C is 4, I could have a problem like A plus 10 and just replace that A with the number 2 to get 2 plus 10 is 12. That's a simple replacement, particularly for a variable and a number. You see it very often. Now we have some properties of equality, and that when we solve equations, we've done these over and over where I'm allowed to add, subtract, multiply, divide, anything I want to either side of an equation, and it still remains equal. It doesn't change the value of the equation. So the subtraction property says if I have A is equal to B, if I subtract C from A and I subtract C from B, it's still equal. I can subtract any amount to both sides of the equation as long as I'm consistent and do it to both, it stays equal. That's the substitution property of equality. Same thing with addition. If A equals B, then the addition property of equality says I can add C to the left side, add C to the right side, and it remains equal. Addition property of equality. Same would hold true with multiplication. Multiplication property of equality states that multiplying equal quantities by a common term does not change the equality. So if A equals B, then A times C would equal B times C. I can multiply C to the left side, the right side of the equation, it remains equal. Same thing is true with divide. The division property of equality is just like addition, subtraction, and multiplication. It says that dividing equal terms by a common value keeps equality as long as the divisor is not zero. So we have a little qualifier on this one. Dividing by zero messes everything up. So as long as it's not zero, we can still divide any amount we want to either side of our equation and it would remain equal. So let's look at when we could use this. So let's look at an algebraic proof and we can go through some steps and solve an equation um, and then we can state the reason. And this is what we're moving more towards is not just that this is the next step, but what mathematical proof, what mathematical property or statement would help back this up. So we're going to start with on the left side, we have our steps, our statements, and on the right side, we have a reason. And the most common reason of them all is we're given. That's what we're starting with. 8 equals 2x plus 3. Then if I go ahead and let's say I subtract 3 from each side, what property would that show? Substitution property of equality. Then Let's say I replace this um, 3 minus 3. Let's just say I add 0. Um, so I'm sorry, if I'm subtracting 3 from this side, subtracting 3 from this side, I'm showing the subtraction property of equality. Then I have additive inverse. Then let's say from additive inverse, we have 8 minus 3 equals 2x. So adding 0, adding 0 just gave us the same as what we started with. Um, that's the additive inverse. Then I have additive identity. Oh, this was the inverse. Inverse was with minus 3 from each side. Additive identity, adding 0, getting back the original problem we started with. Substitution property, I can substitute 8 minus 3 for 5. 
I multiply to get rid of this 2 in front of the x. I can multiply a half to this side, multiply a half to this side. When I'm multiplying half to each side, that's the multiplication property of equality. How about this step? What did we do here? We changed the order. Wow, if we change the order, that has to, are we adding or are we multiplying? We are multiplying, so commutative property has to do with changing the order on multiplication. And when we multiply 2 times 1 half to get 1, we're using the multiplicative inverse property. And then 1x is just the same as x, so what property would that be? Multiplicative identity property. Then let's replace this 1 half times 5. If I replace that with 5 halves, if I'm replacing that, I'm substituting 5 halves in for 1 half times 5. That is the substitution property. And if I just flip these sides, if I flip x to this side and 5 halves to the other side, I have the symmetric property of equality. So hopefully that helps you guys sit up and use your first of the algebraic proofs and hopefully have all those definitions written down. Have a great day. O-U-T spells out.